So in this problem, you're given measure angle C is 50 degrees. So this angle here is 50 degrees. I'm just going to write this as 50 degrees over here. And then you're given ABC, which is this entire thing. It's equal to this angle is equal to 60 degrees. Now, as soon as you see this and you look at this triangle, you can think about what happens in all the sums of angles in this triangle. So you have this 60 plus 50 plus how much is equal to 180. And that's going to give you this measure over here. So 60 plus 50 is 110 plus how much is 180? Of course, the answer is 70 degrees. So therefore, this angle over here is 70 degrees. So that's the first part. That's the first part of this puzzle. Now let's look at the other part. This is 60 degrees and this is 70. But the other important part that you want to remember is, is that AE bisects angle BAC. So what is BAC? BAC is here. So remember, it starts from B, goes to A, and then C here, and it bisects it. What it means is it cuts this. It cuts this angle like this into two equal parts. In other words, you have this angle here, which is 70. It cuts it into two equal parts, which means each of these is, this is 35, and this is 35, because 35 is 70 divided by 2, right? So this angle here is 35 degrees. Now our task, our final task, is to find out what is the measure of this angle, which is FEB over here. FEB, right? So let's just look at this triangle now over here, this particular triangle this green triangle. You've got 60 here, you've got 35, and you want to find out this. Very, very easy. You do 60 plus 35 plus how much is equal to 180, because the sum of angles is always 180, right? So 60 plus um, 35 is 95 plus how much is 180. So of course, your answer is 180 minus 95, which gives you the answer of 85. And so therefore, 85 is your answer. Now it's your turn. What if the C angle is not 50, it's 40 degrees. So that means this angle here is 40 degrees over here, right? And then ABC, this angle over here is given to be 60 degrees. So a little bit of a change. So remember the first step you want to do is look at this entire triangle, try to find out this one. Then this bisects it, so divided by two. And then you have this triangle and try to find this value. So try to find this answer and post it in the comments because it's definitely going to help you practice better. I've just redrawn this image here so you can see this better. Now let's get started. So measure angle A is 40 degrees. So this one over here is 40 degrees. Now you've got measure angle BED and they're asking us what is the measure of this angle. So, but first, because this is a parallelogram, the most important property is that if you've got this angle here is 40, this is 140 and this is also 140. What do I mean by 140 degrees? I mean that this plus this should always be 180 degrees. So this value 140 degrees is 180 minus 40 degrees. That's how you get 140 degrees. So that's the first part. Now the second thing is that you're told that EB bisects, EB bisects ABC. So this part here is cutting this angle into two parts. So it's cutting this into two parts, which in other words, this and this are the same length. It's the half of 140. So therefore, the more important part is that this angle here is 70. So let's rewrite this a little bit better now. Because this was 140, this therefore becomes 70 degrees. Again, it's a parallelogram. So therefore, if you think about these as your parallel lines like this, and this as your transversal, then if this is 70, then this also has to be 70. This is the idea. This is the idea of transversal. This is your transversal. And so therefore, this is 70 degrees because these are, these are alternate interior angles. Now, if this is 70, the final step is to find out what is this. But because you know this plus this is 180 degrees because these are supplementary angles, it's going to be 180 minus 70 and that is 110 because 110 plus 70 gives you 180 degrees and so therefore this is your this is your correct answer because they're asking you what is the measure of this angle now it's your turn to solve what if this angle actually bed i'm telling you is given to be a different angle let's say it's 130 degrees if bed is 130 degrees can you backtrack your way to this angle and from here so of course, you know what is this angle. From here, you want to go to this angle. And from here, you want to go to this angle. And let's see how quickly you can find out the measure of angle DAB. So what is the measure of angle DAB if the BED is given to you? Remember, it's a parallelogram. So you want to use all of these properties. You just want to backtrack and get your answer and comment your answers. All right, this is a solid problem. And I hope you can solve it by yourself. So remember, what they're asking is measure of angle ABD. So you want to find out what is this angle over here. But if you want to find out this angle, remember this is 
a these two lines are parallel this means parallel right so a b is already parallel to dc these two are parallel and this is your transversal so what they really want us to find out is if this but in reality they want us to find out this angle because this and this are the same because there are alternate interior angles so if you can find this you're all set because it's equal to this so how do we go about finding this that's the main purpose of this problem so let's get started so remember you want to find out this but the important thing that's given to us are two two things are given to us ad is equal to ae so that means this is equal to this also at the same time you're given dae is equal to 35 which means this is equal to 35 degrees but because you have this is equal to this it's an isosceles triangle so the base angles are the same which means let's call them a here now let's use this important idea the sum of angles in a triangle is 180 which means when you sum up a plus a plus 35 the total is equal to 180. now a plus a is 2a and then you add 35, you get 180, right? So how do you solve this? You subtract 35. And then you're going to get 145 degrees. And so 2A is 145. So A is equal to 145 divided by 2, which is 72.5 degrees. So that's the first step. This is equal to 72.5 degrees. Now, if you can only find this angle, this entire angle, then you subtract this this value from here to get this one okay so that's the main idea so remember the most important part right now is that we've got the value of 72.5 degrees over here so let's try to evaluate this part here you've got 72.5 over here now let's look at the final step so the final step is basically this you've got 35 here right and then you've got 72.5 but they've got one more thing here you've got dce is equal to 25 degrees which means this is equal to 25 degrees over here so now this is equal to 25 this is equal to 35 now let's look at this triangle here and this triangle here is you want to what you want to calculate so 35 25 and so therefore remember not just this this entire value here this value is going to be how much this value is going to be 35 plus 25 plus how much is equal to 180 this is equal to 60 so 60 plus how much is 180 so actually the how much is 180 minus 60 which is 120 degrees so therefore you finally have this as 120 degrees so what's the main idea you've got this is 120 this is 72.5 so what is this measure which is a bit hard to see this value here it's 120 minus 72.5 degrees and that value is 47.5 degrees so remember this value is 47.5 and because this value is 47.5 this value also over here is 47.5 degrees because they are this these lines are parallel and this is a transversal so this is a long solid problem hopefully you can solve a similar problem of this type so this is 47.5 and that's your answer I would highly encourage you to solve the same problem but with slightly different numbers. So I'm going to change these two numbers and this one is totally useless. You don't even need this actually. DAE, this one is 40 degrees this time. The second step is these two are equal. So if these two are equal, then it's very easy to find these two angles because this plus this plus this is 40 and these are the same angles here. So it's very easy to find these two. Then the next thing I'm going to give you is the next thing I'm going to give you is DCE, which is this angle. And this angle I'm going to say is equal to 30 degrees. So this is 40, this is 30. So you can find out, easily find out this, this value over here. Once you have this value, you subtract it from this value. You've got this particular angle here. And this angle is also equal to this. Remember, if you want to practice and score high on your test, you definitely want to solve this problem. I'm waiting for your answer on what is the angle measure of angle a b d so post your answers in the comments and let's move on this is a solidly easy example here all you need to understand is the property of isosceles triangles so how do you solve this you're given a e is equal to d e so only look at this triangle here only look at this external angle over here and you're given a, a e if you're not able to see this is a e and this is equal to d e and if these two are equal in this triangle if these two sides are equal then you always want to remember that this angle is always equal to this angle that's the hint for you now that you you know this it's very easy to solve this problem so see if you can find the answer and post your answer in the comments what's the correct answer for this remember isosceles triangles always have this property and these lines are useless you don't even need them 
Let's move on. All right, in this problem, you're asked to prove that ABCD is a parallelogram. What does it mean? You've got this length over here, ABCD is a parallelogram. In other words, they're asking you to prove that these two lines are parallel. And then also, these two lines are parallel. So let's start with the first step. Let's try to prove that these two lines over here are parallel. So how do we do that? We're going to draw a transversal like this, right? And then all you need to do is some of, somewhere you want to show some two angles are equal. So I'm going to choose two and five and they're equal. This angle is equal to this. Why is it? It's because they are alternate interior angles. So two is equal to five is one of the choices here. So angle two is congruent to angle five. That's the first one. And I've already proven that these two lines are now parallel. Now, the final step, you want to show that these two lines, these two lines are parallel. How do you show that? You want another transversal. So you'll have this transversal now, right? This transversal. And then you want to show somehow some angles are equal so that these are parallel. How can you show this? You got five and seven. Five and seven are parallel. Why is that? Because they are corresponding angles. So that's the reason why five and seven are parallel. So therefore, angle five is congruent to angle seven. And so therefore, two, five, five, seven, this gives you your correct answer. Now you try to prove it with different angles. So if you have these two parallel lines, and this is a transversal, you already know two is congruent to five. But what if it's not five? What if what can be another angle here? Post your answers in the comments, what can be another angle to prove that these two lines are parallel? Also, let's try the next part. If you if you've got these two lines now, these two lines over here, then instead of using five and seven, what could be another pair that you can use? So if you got these two lines and then you got this transversal and six, angle six is congruent to which one? So think about it, six is congruent to which one? There could be multiple answers to these two problems. So post your answers in the comments and this way you'll totally understand parallel lines. This is a very popular problem. So pause the video and see if you can solve it by yourself. I'm gonna show you how to solve it in less than 30 seconds. So how would you solve this? You first start with measure of angle E, which is over here, and that is equal to 62 degrees. So I'm just gonna write down 62 over here. The next thing you wanna think about is EF is perpendicular to FH. So here, this part, EF is perpendicular to FH. This part is over here, 90 degrees. Next step, you've got this as a parallelogram and you're given C is 51. So if this is 51, what is also 51? This is 51, but more importantly, this part is 180 minus 51, which gives you 129. So this is 129 over here. Now, the final step. Think about this quadrilateral. You've got these three sides, and they're actually asking you this one. What is the value of this? So you just write down 129 plus 62 plus 90 plus how much gives you 360 degrees. Now, when you add this, you're going to get 281. So 281 plus how much gives you 360 degrees. So you subtract 281 from 360, giving you 79 degrees as your answer. So therefore, one is your correct choice. Now I'm going to reverse the problem on you. Let's assume that this is already 90 degrees, which means this is perpendicular. Now, if the value of FHB is actually, in this case, suppose it's given to be 76, so it's already 76, then can you figure out what is this angle? Of course, this is 51, that's correct, but this is wrong. This is, in this new problem, can you figure out what is this value measure angle E? So work through the problem in the reverse fashion and then post your answers. This is really going to help you understand this problem. Okay, so you are asked to find out triangle ABC is isosceles. So I've plotted this in Desmos here. And of course, clearly, this side has to be proven to be equal to this side. So how do you do it? How do you find the length of this side? Very, very easy. You just you just write a, you just draw a right triangle here. This is 90 degrees. And then how much is this length? One, two, three, four, five. So this is five units. This is one, two, three, four, five. It's five units. So how do you find this length? This C. You just use the Pythagorean theorem. C squared is equal to five squared plus five squared which is equal to 25 plus 25, which is equal to 50. C squared is equal to 50. So C is equal to the square root of 50. Remember, this is how you get rid of the square root. Just take the square, you just take the square root. So this is 50 over here. In other words, this length over here is square root of 50. Let's just leave, write it like this. Now for the next step, 
you want to show this length over here AC is also 50 so how do you do this you want to draw this right triangle over here this right triangle over here and then of course how how much is this length this is one two three four five six seven right and this is one so you got seven and one now how do you find this length over here let's draw it again let's write it down c squared is equal to seven squared plus one squared this time because it's seven here and it's one over here so of course you're going to write down this is equal to 49 plus one because seven squared is 49 that's equal to 50 again and so therefore how do you get rid of the square root square sign you just take the square root over here c is equal to square root of 50 so this is also equal to square root of 50 and so therefore this side is equal to this side and that's proved and now here's my question for you what is the length of this length bc so remember you can do the same thing you just want to draw a right triangle here right triangle like this this is 90 degrees so therefore this is two over here units and this is one two three four four units here so try to use this formula c squared is equal to blah 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 plus blah 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 and then try to find the c is equal to square root of something and post your answers i want to find out what is this answer i want to know what is this inside the square root sign for this length over here this bc length so let me know let's see how quickly you can solve it i'll be waiting